The playoff race in the Eastern Conference is heating up, and with about seven games to go, there's a number of teams who are still fighting for playoff position. We've got all that and more on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Wednesday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account. Use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Well, uh, I know most of you were looking for Ross, uh, but he's not here today. I'm Gil Martin, subbing in for him, and uh, great to be with Michael uh, on the Wednesday show. And, uh, boy, this is an exciting time of year. Uh, So many teams so close together, and uh, it it just looks like it's going to go down to the last game. It really is. It's it's uh, there's been so much parity in the league all season long. And no matter what you're looking at, whether it's, you know, the final couple of playoff spots in the wild card or you're looking at the top of each division, nothing has been solidified yet. Absolutely nothing. It's quite wild how uh, how wide open the entire playoff landscape is in the Eastern Conference right now. Um, cause it, it, really there could be any of like 10 different playoff combinations at this point. And it's kind of crazy, uh, crazy to say, but yeah, we got a fun couple of final weeks in store for us, uh, until we get to playoff time. Yeah. And it seems like at the bottom, the teams that are fighting for those final two playoff spots, all of them are just so inconsistent where one yeah. night they look like they belong in the playoffs and another night. They can't seem to beat teams that are definitely not going to the playoffs. They can't seem to string, you know, they'll win two, then lose two, but the consistency <clears throat> just hasn't been there. Yeah, it's it's been a really weird and bizarre, you know, couple of weeks here for a lot of these teams. Uh, I, I think what I believe is still up for grabs, at least. I think that third spot in the Metro is still up for grabs with the Flyers really sputtering here down the stretch. And then obviously that second wild card spot, I believe is still very much available with Tampa Bay. They haven't technically clinched a spot yet, but at 89 points, they've got a a pretty good cushion on the rest of these teams battling for a wild card spot. I think Tampa Bay is more likely to to catch up to Toronto than fall out of the playoffs completely, uh, in my opinion. So, you know, you've got two spots available, one in the Metro and then still another wild card position. And I don't know about you, Gil, but I think that there's still, what do you got? The Flyers, the Capitals, the Red Wings, the Islanders. Heck, are, are, are did the Penguins get themselves back into this thing with, with a couple of wins this week while the other teams took some losses to not pull away here? Like, is that where the cutoff line is, you think, at this point? Is it going all the way down to the Pittsburgh Penguins um, who currently sit just three points back of the Washington Capitals and four points back of the Philadelphia Flyers for a playoff spot. Yeah, I I think that is the cutoff. Buffalo and New Jersey kind of hanging on by the skin of their teeth and and Buffalo's played an extra game, which really hurts their chances. Yeah. But I, I mean, every day it seems like there's another team in that final spot and then the flyers are a wild card and then they're in third again. And, you know, they, they just seem to be uh, struggling a little bit, although, uh, you know, they unveiled their new goalie from Russia uh, against the Islanders the other day. And I I have to say that uh, Fedotov really did play well. And, uh, you know, he looks like, he could be very helpful to the Flyers because they have been riding Samuel Urson so much down the stretch since Carter Hart had to leave the team. Yeah, wouldn't that be a great story? This kid who was it two years ago tried to defect to to 
uh, the United States to play for Philadelphia, I guess, gets caught while doing so and then is forced into uh, a couple of years of service with the Army and then uh, was playing in the KHL this past season. And then all of a sudden, you know, the KHL decided to uh, end his contract and he was able to come and sign with Philadelphia. And if he could be a big part of this team, Going forward, you know, down the final stretch here, and maybe win them a couple of games or play in the playoffs. Man, that'd be a really, really neat story, wouldn't it? That would be a huge story. And it's it's like exactly what the Flyers needed was goaltending reinforcement right now. I mean, okay, so far he's played two periods, so it's a little tough to right. make a huge judgment. But, you know, he played against the Islanders. I saw that game. And uh, he, he not only is he big at six foot eight, but he's got really good reflexes and he's quick. Uh, you know, he he did look solid in that performance. Obviously, he's got to keep that going. And then, you know, let's face it. When you talk about the Philadelphia Flyers, John Tortorella, never a dull moment with torts. <laughs> now, what's your take on uh uh, I guess we'll call it Torts' antics this season. I mean, there's been multiple times now where he's either lost it with the media or he's, you know, called out players. He sat as captain. Uh, the other night had another blow up, we'll call it, where he basically said everyone but Fedotov uh, played like garbage in the game, uh, in that game there. So, I mean, where are you at with, with John Tortorella? I was having this conversation with a buddy of mine yesterday, and I, I feel like the the Flyers in a weird spot where it seems like maybe they could possibly be growing tiresome of what's going on here. I mean, the team's only won two of the last ten games, but still in a playoff spot, and 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 not really uh, where they were expected to be at this point in the season. But you know, Torts has done a good job coaching this team, getting them ready uh, each game, and and in the position that they're in. But on the same side or on the other side of the coin here, you know, he might be losing that room with, with his antics. Like, I'm curious where you think things will go with Tortorella and the Philadelphia Flyers going forward. It's an interesting situation because on the one hand, look, the motivation that he has is to motivate his team, to inspire his team, to get them to play harder. But the thing about John Tortorella, he's a very good coach but he seems to have an expiration date. It, it, it's like his antics, uh, as you said, tend to wear thin after a while. And, you know, the Flyers are uh, kind of a year ahead of schedule. Nobody expected them to make the playoffs this year when the season started. So the fact that they're even fighting for a playoff spot is better than what most people expected. But I, I think some of those antics that you, you know, referred to, they wear on people after a while, and we may be getting to that point where the Flyers are starting to tune him out a little bit. So what do you think, Flyers, in or out? What do you think? I, I'm going to say out, but it's going. I think it's going down to the final game or two of the season. How about you? What's your take? Yeah, I'm with you, man. You just, like, they, they seem to be sputtering and not at the right time of the year. Um, they've played one, uh, even two more games than everyone else that they're they're battling with. And uh, currently they are sitting in the third spot in the Metro Division just by one point, but have a worse um, points percentage than both the Capitals and the Red Wings. And you got the Islanders who are right on their heels. Uh, if they win one more game, um, you know, then they've got a better record than the Flyers and better points percentage than the Flyers this season so it'll be real interesting to see how they close things out i believe uh, but ultimately I, I do think that the philadelphia flyers uh, the cinderella season that they had really came crashing down kind of after the whole couturier situation and things are spiraling to a point where i think they're gonna miss the playoffs i'm with you gil and that's you know where we where we thought things would be at the beginning of the season but at one point they were kind of the the darling Cinderella story. And then, I don't know, it seems like the last month, things have really soured there. Yeah, I, and I think part of it is the goaltending situation. And that's why, you know, Fedotov really gives them a little bit of hope. Uh, yeah. You know, if he can come in and play well, he might be able to improve that aspect of this team. Because, you know, since Carter Hart's departure, Urson has been playing almost every game. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I'm just looking at his numbers right now for what he was doing when he was in Russia. Pretty solid goalie, the Fedotov. And he's, he's a little bit older than people might think. He's 27 uh, years old. He was drafted back in 2015. So that was what, the McDavid draft? So like the McDavid, yeah. Marner, uh, Dylan Strom, like that's that's when Fedotov was drafted. So we know it takes goalies a little longer to get going. And then obviously you got the Russian factor when players are, you know, stuck with their KHL teams forever. Um, but this is a guy the last four years here uh, in the KHL has put up some stellar, stellar numbers. This past season, a 237 goals against a 914 save percentage. Last year had a 919 save percentage with a 185 goals against and a 937 save percentage uh, through the playoffs where he had 22 games in the playoffs with a 16 and six record. Looks like uh, they won the, they win the playoffs last year. It was that they might've, they might've, um, yeah. That was a, a couple of years ago, sorry, because last year he didn't play because uh, right. he was serving um, in the Army. So, you know, coming back this year, played well in the KHL, uh, and now he's, you know, going over to, to Philadelphia. And I guess right away they're throwing him in the fire. Let's see what you got, kid. Uh, we'll see if he can uh, help. Obviously, he might not be the guy right away, but certainly help Urson try and get this team uh, into the playoffs because you just got to get into the dance, right, Gil? You get into the dance and you never know what's going to happen. Anything can happen, especially if your goalie gets hot at the right time. So we have got a lot more to discuss on today's show. We'll continue to break down the playoff chase, including the Tampa Bay Lightning, who have been playing some of their best hockey since the trade deadline. We've got all of that and a lot more coming up on this episode of the Locked On NHL Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. They've got killer last-minute deals, all in prices, the view from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. So game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And, you know, I love that view from your seat. You go on the app, you could see what you're going to see when you get to the ballpark before you buy the tickets. And that really means there's no surprises when you get to the game. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Just download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? We'll make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. And it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Michael, let's talk Tampa Bay Lightning because they have been absolutely red hot lately. You know, I think since the trade deadline, they've been one of the best teams, if not the best team in hockey. I completely agree, Gil. I mean, you just take a look. The record speaks for itself. 8-1-1 one, and one since the trade deadline. Uh, they've outscored their opponents by 20 uh, goals over that 10 game stretch. So like they're literally, they, they're, they're averaging two, uh, two more goals per game than their opponents. So uh, they've been unbelievable. They've got the best power play, the best penalty kill since the NHL trade deadline. Basilevsky is starting to round into form. He's like seven, one and one with a nine twenty six save percentage, I believe since the deadline. So uh yeah like this team is is making a push and they're rounding into form at the right time and that's scary if you are an eastern conference team knowing that the tampa bay lightning are finally finding their stride here um you know with with the 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 final few weeks of the regular season this is the time to get hot and for the red uh for the the lightning Man, they they're getting hot at the right time. That's that's going to be a scary team to deal with 
for whoever gets them in round one, whichever, you know, team wins their division, but doesn't win the conference. That is going to be a, a, a scary and daunting matchup. It is. And, you know, there are no easy matchups in the playoffs, but getting hot at the right time, I sort of compare it to the Florida Panthers last year where they barely made the playoffs, but you knew there was more talent on that roster than where they were in the standings. And I think you've got a similar situation here with the Lightning, and yet the Lightning have so many guys with Stanley Cup experience. I mean, Vasilevsky and, and how good is Nikita Kucherov this year? <laughs> I mean, right up at the top, you know, he's having an Art Ross campaign tied with McKinnon right now, 127 points, 42 goals. The guy's unbelievable. And uh, I mean, I'll, I'll get a, you know, an up close and personal view tonight. They're taking on uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I'll, I'll be very, very attentive in this game. And, you know, I, the, the Leafs have a chance to book a playoff spot with a win tonight or any point uh, against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, but if they lose to the Lightning tonight, I mean, Tampa, there's an opportunity for them to kind of close in on, on Toronto for that third and final spot in the Atlantic too. Like they're, they're making a push. Not only they've, I think they've solidified their wild card positioning at the very least. And now I think they've got their eyes set on, you know, finishing in the Atlantic uh, in that third spot, potentially, because if they win, there's only a four point buffer and, and there's still another game to be played between the Leafs and the Lightning. It's, I believe, the final game of the season, actually, for both teams. And that could legitimately solidify who's a wild card team and who ends up with the third uh, third spot in the Atlantic division. And I got to tell you, I don't feel great about the Maple Leafs chances tonight. I, I think the Lightning are playing just some extremely good hockey. You want to hear an insane stat about the Lightning since the uh, since the All Star break, Gil? Go ahead. Their net PK is a hundred and three percent. Wow, a hundred and three percent. What that means is they've scored more goals while shorthanded than they've been scored on. Like it's insane <laughs> how good that penalty kill has been of late. Um, it's been near perfection, and then they've been providing some offense themselves. So. I mean, it's a tough team. It really is. And and like you said, they're playoff tested. They know how to play in those big games. They're rounding the form at the right time. The Lightning are becoming one of the more scarier teams in the Eastern Conference. They definitely have. And, and the timing, like you said, is spot on for them. How about the Washington Capitals? They're on a three-game losing streak. They have a negative 35 goal differential, <laughs> and yet they're clinging to that last playoff spot as of right now. Yeah, well, it's real interesting because about two weeks ago, it seemed like the Capitals were, um, you know, a team where it's like, what? how is this team consistently scoring, winning? How do they have themselves back into the playoff race when it felt like around the deadline they were conceding, like the the – the season was almost over. A lot of the trade bait boards had some of their some of their players, depth guys who were out there. Um, but somehow, some way, they're scoring goals and winning games. Uh, Ovi went that stretch with like what eight goals in a five game stretch or yeah. something like that. Like it was it was wild. It was insane. Awesome to see. Obviously, for everyone who wants to to see him, you know, finish off Gretzky's goal record sooner rather than later. But uh, yeah, they're an interesting squad right now. And, you know, it's a team that at one point I certainly said, I don't think they'll make the playoffs, but they're hanging in. They're hanging in. And ultimately, it seems like none of those, you know, final few teams uh, really want to make the playoffs, whether it's the Flyers or the Red Wings or uh, Washington, even, you know, your Islanders, Gil, for a while there, it seemed like they were going to, you know, kind of walk into a playoff spot, but they've kind of hit the skid of late as well, playing some 500 hockey um, to the point where now they've even let the the Pittsburgh Penguins back into the conversation. So it's definitely going to be extremely interesting uh, down the stretch. And wouldn't it be awesome if like the final game of the season, uh, it comes down to a point and maybe not so much for you. Cause I think the Islanders might be a team where they get uh, screwed out of this, but where it comes down to, all right, one of Ovi or Sid, 
get to go to the playoffs. Right. You know, whoever wins this last game uh, gets gets their shot uh, in the playoffs. I think that would be great if it comes down to it the last day or two of the season where it's like, all right, sit or Ovi. You know, which one of the, those two can power their teams into the postseason? Uh, I, I think that'd be really good theater for hockey fans. It would be. And just to add a little twist to it, the last game of the season for the Pittsburgh Penguins is on Long Island against the Islanders. So the winner of that game may actually get a spot yeah. depending on where we're at. So it's going to be exciting. It really is going to be exciting down the stretch. Yeah, 100 percent. Like, do you have a lean as to, I guess, who finishes in that third spot, in the Metro and then which team claims that last final wild card spot oh boy yeah uh third in the metro i think washington will find a way to kind of sneak in with that i i just think i could see ovechkin almost willing that team into the playoffs and then if if you go for that last wild card i'm leaning toward detroit right now and here's why. Uh, no you faith know, in your boys, Gil. No faith no, in the I Islanders. I, I, I don't have a lot of faith because the Islanders have been, I mean, all these teams have been so inconsistent. Yeah. I, I guess I lean toward Detroit because they have a positive goal differential. And I just think they have a little bit more young talent on that team uh, to get the job done. But you know what? I don't have faith in any of these teams right now. Yeah, no, it's uh, I believe it was Daryl Sutter who said it a few years ago um, when he said whoever faces Colorado, it's uh, like a eight game extent or an eight day extension to their season or something like that. It, yeah. it meant basically saying, yeah, it's it'd be nice to make the playoffs. But if you play Colorado, you're going home in, in four games is basically what he said there. I think that'd be very similar to like whichever one of these teams kind of limp into the playoffs i don't love their chances at doing much damage uh and that would be i guess you know if you're one of the top teams in the east right now uh whether that's boston or or florida or the rangers or carolina like that top seed is still very much available and and the thought of have getting to play one of those inconsistent teams that finish out with the second wild card spot would be a very uh a very um uh like it's it's a good carrot to be dangled i guess for any of those teams down the stretch to finish strong and try and claim that spot that top spot in the east yeah that is the most favorable matchup you finish second in the conference not as favorable so it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out and we'll talk more about potential playoff matchups coming up on this episode of the Locked On NHL Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to Busted Bracket because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your fi first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who you think is going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. FanDuel, the official sports book of the Locked On Network. So, Michael, one thing we definitely do not know, none of the matchups right now in the Eastern Conference are set. And it, it's there are so many possible combinations when you look at the standings right now. No, oh, it's, it's crazy. Like we were just talking about a, a moment ago, you have four teams that can still finish at the top of the conference that are within five points of each other down the stretch here. You've got the Rangers who are currently leading the way with 104 points. Uh, you've got the Boston Bruins in second with 103. They've got Carolina with a 101 and then the Florida Panthers with 99. But um, I mean, it's, it's conceivable that any of those four teams could still uh, finish at the top of the Eastern Conference, which would be the most favorable matchup. But imagine being a team that finishes 
second in the Atlantic, like whether it's Boston or Florida, whichever one finishes second, the consolation prize, and, and they can even finish second in the conference, and then they'll have to play the the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like it, it's it's so difficult. You look at the way that the playoffs um, are kind of set up now. That two three matchup in the Atlantic is going to be so much more difficult than that two three matchup in the Metro. Cause like you said, it's either going to be either a Florida or a Washington or sorry, uh, a, a, a Philly or a Washington, or maybe the Islanders uh, can kind of get that third spot in the Metro division, a far easier matchup than what Toronto will be to whoever finishes second uh, in the Atlantic. Yeah, no question about that. And, and, you know, the, the other thing is this, in your opinion, how important is, you know, finishing first place, getting home ice advantage throughout the playoffs in the Eastern Conference, at least? How, you know, is it worth it going all in for that? Or are you better off saving some gas in the tank for the actual playoffs? Well, um, I, I think it's worth it if you are... <sighs> Yeah, you know it's it's going to be interesting. I think it's worth getting cuz you you don't want to finish second in like if you win the metro, let's say, and you finish second. Uh or even if you're Boston, you finish second. You're going to be playing the Tampa Bay Lightning. So, I think it is worth it to escape Tampa to try and claim that top spot. And A, you get home ice advantage throughout the playoffs but then you also avoid the Tampa Bay lightning in round one and you get the easier matchup with whoever ends up with that second wild card spot. So I think you do, uh, you know, uh, empty the tank is the right word, but you definitely do your best to try and get that top spot in the East. Cause that sets you up for a bit of an easier playoff run. How about the Florida Panthers? I mean, just two, seven and one in their last 10. Yeah. Why are they, you know, faltering a little bit at this point. Yeah, I mean, I I watched them uh, myself the other night when they played the Maple Leafs. Toronto won six to four, and it was it was a five one game at one point, and then the third period, Toronto's defense slipped a little, and and uh, Florida was able to to get themselves back into the game. Um, yeah, it's it's really curious what's going on there with the Panthers. I do know that they did suffer a pretty big injury to Aaron Eckblad, who was out for. I think six or seven games, uh, which the team went like one in five, I think, in that stretch. So they they really, you know, that was a big reason for why they they've struggled of late. His absence was a big reason for it. Um, but with him back, I, I'm guessing they're gonna they have to really, you know, get going. I mean, you, you do not want to limp into a playoff scenario here. I mean, the, the Florida Panthers winning just two of their last ten games, it's it's opposite of what happened a season ago with them where they had to go on a big run just to make the playoffs. Uh, yeah, I, I, that, that's a team that if you're a fan out in sunrise out in, in South Florida, you're definitely scratching your head saying, is this team going to figure it out in the final? <laughs> what do they got? Six games left. Uh, yeah, they got six games to go. Um, yeah, that's a team that definitely, if I was a fan base, uh, a fan of that squad, I'd be a little, little concerned with what's going on. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, you know, again, they have six games left to kind of right the ship and find themselves. And if they don't, you know, they could be in for a, a very tough matchup in the first round as well. And and you would hate to have such a great regular season and then have an early exit to the playoffs. I mean, it's going to happen all around the NHL. Like I know we sit here and we talk about the Eastern Conference a lot, obviously being the Eastern Conference show, but out West, there's going to be a lot of really good teams that are going to be eliminated in the playoffs just because the the round one matchups and the way that everything kind of shakes out with the 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 format in which the playoffs are are done nowadays. You always have good teams that have good regular seasons that unfortunately are going to have a first round exit. And uh, last year, Florida went all the way to the cup final. No one was expecting it. And then this season, just when you expect for them to to be another, you know, have another competitive season, maybe it's a first round exit. I don't know. Uh, everything's different come playoff time. The one thing that I'd be happy about, though, if I am Florida, um, I saw what Bobrovsky did last year. 
And that's all really they need is for uh, Officer Bob to, to to show up come playoff time, and they got a chance to win 16 games. They they just they no will with him playing at his best. When he's on, he can t- t- carry a team a long, long way, and yeah. maybe even all the way to a Stanley Cup. So uh, no doubt about that. So, yeah, uh, it, it's going to be an interesting stretch drive. Just a couple of weeks left in this season. I can't believe how quickly it's gone. And, of course, we will be here on Locked On NHL every step of the way covering this league and all throughout the rest of the regular season and the playoffs. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Michael, I want to thank you for uh, letting me sit in here and uh, co-host the show with you. It's always a pleasure to to work with you. And uh, again, we will be back Here every day, Monday through Friday on Locked On NHL, bringing you the biggest stories from around the league. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And thanks for listening to and watching the Locked On NHL podcast.